When we look at, in, in the world today at the biggest causes of death and also disability or ill health, uh, the biggest cause of death is blood pressure and ill health through the heart failure and strokes it causes. The next one is tobacco, cigarette smoking. And the next one, surprisingly, is raised cholesterol because this causes atheroma and again, major cause of heart attacks, peripheral vascular disease and strokes. And then behind that is obesity and type 2 diabetes. And as we all know, this is a rapidly growing problem uh, and more and more people are dying of obesity and in particular suffering from type 2 diabetes and dying from it. Now, when we think about this and how are we going to prevent these people becoming ill and dying prematurely, it's quite obvious that the most important cause of death now in the world is the food that we eat. And this is particularly because the food industry, the global food industry, is selling us and promoting and very cleverly advertising products that are very high in salt, that puts up our blood pressure, very high in saturated fat, that puts up our cholesterol, and very high in fat and sugar, which contain huge amounts of calories, and the products that are sold give no feeling of satiation or fullness, so you eat far too much of them, and you become obese, you get abdominal obesity, metabolic syndrome in adults, and then develop type 2 diabetes. So we've really got to now do something about the global food industry and the food that they're giving us, and particularly in the more socially deprived people in developed countries, these foods must be limited and must be reformulated and they must stop advertising. Now we've been successful in the UK in slowly getting the food and to slowly reduce the amount of salt in the food without people really realising. And most of the products in the supermarket that you buy, whether branded or own label, salt, salt added has been reduced by between 20 and 40 percent. Because it's been done slowly, no one notices. And this has reduced salt in the whole population by 15 percent. Population blood pressure has fallen, and this has saved at least 9,000 deaths from strokes and heart attacks per year in the UK alone by this simple move. Now, we could do the same for sugar. We could slowly reduce the amount of sugar in all products, particularly for sweet and soft drinks. Totally unnecessary. We could easily get it down 10% a year without people noticing in all soft drinks across the board that have added sugar, and also all the products we buy in the supermarket that have added sugar. And we could do the same for fat. And if reduced saturated fat, particularly that would cause a fall in cholesterol, fat has more calories than sugar, and therefore a 15% reduction in fat intake would cause about a 100 kilocalorie reduction in, in energy intake on average, and a 40% reduction in sugar would also cause a 100 kilocalorie reduction in energy intake. And if we stop promoting these products and ban the advertising of all unhealthy products, as well as reducing portion size and availability of these products, we reckon this would cut out another 50 kilocalories. In total, 250 kilograms would be removed from the average calorie consumption of consumers. And this would stop people getting obese and developing type 2 diabetes. Now the question is, is the food industry prepared to do this? And the answer is, they have to do it. And they've got a small window of opportunity to do that now, get together with governments and ministries of health to do this. Because if they don't do it, they will be forced to do it by regulation and legislation. And there's no need for that. The food industry does not need to slowly poison us. It can give us healthy foods that have much less salt, saturated fat, and calories from fat and sugar, and still make a good profit. So why don't they do that? Because dead consumers, and if they kill off consumers prematurely, which is what they're doing at the moment, those people no longer eat food, and they've lost them from their profits. Whereas if they 
fed everyone more healthy food, there'd be more of us, we'd live longer, and they could make more profits. So it's in their self-interest, and they have to recognize this, and the public have to recognize, too, the dangers of these foods, as well as governments. And we need action now to stop all these people dying completely unnecessarily through the food they eat, from strokes, heart attacks, heart failure, and many cancers as well are brought on by this sort of foods and lack of fruit and vegetables as well.